Hello, hello, more Dimers here and welcome to Legends of Chess 2020 again. This is the day number nine. That means the last round of the of the preliminary stage. Um, and I would like to show you the game between two world champions, two uh, legends, Vladimir Kramnik, who's going to play as white in this game, and Magnus Carlsen, who's going to play, of course, as black. Um, just information about what happened in the first game. So uh, first two games... Uh, uh, ended with the draws and then Magnus Carlsen won with the white pieces. That means Vladimir Kramnik, if he wants to uh, win this match, then he has to force the Armageddon. That means he has to win now as white. So without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. We have e4 by Vladimir Kramnik, c5 by Carlsen, knight to f3 and now d6 d4, c takes on d4, knight to d4, and now knight f6 with the attack on the, on the pawn, knight c3 defending, and now a6, Nidorf variation on the board, and here bishop to c4. And now the main line, which Magnus Carlsen could go, goes as follow, e6, uh, I would like just to show you the spirit, most of you probably know, uh, but after bishop to b3, b5 is played, and after castle, bishop e7, uh, queen to f3, Three, which is pretty tricky because uh, e5 with the attack on the on the knight is a threat and discover attack on the rook. Uh, so queen to c7. So now if e5 is played, then bishop b7 counters the queen. Uh, queen to g3 and after castle, um, bishop to h6, knight to e8. And this position is well known, hundreds of games in the database and it's pretty equal, uh, both sides of course uh, can still, you know, win. However, here Magnus Carlsen first goes for b5, we have bishop to b3 uh, and only now e6. Bishop to e3, now bishop e7, we have queen to e2, so Vladimir Kramnik is ready for the castle and now he can choose where he wants to castle. Magnus goes for the castle on the king side of course uh, and now now the main line, the main line hit, the most popular is actually castle on the queen side, very sharp, uh, there are almost no draws, uh, most of the games are decisive, uh, sometimes you know black can win, sometimes white and only less than 5% of the draws here. So uh, this is the main line. However, f3 was played by Vladimir Kramnik, so he doesn't want to castle. He stays with the king in the center. So potentially it can be sharper. However, how to continue as black? Because if black continue, you know, uh, with the attack on the on the queen side, then white can can castle on the on the king side. And from the other hand, if want to, for example, open the center, then this bishop gonna be even more powerful on this diagonal. So uh, not easy task for black. Magnus is waiting, so queen to c7, uh, and now g4. So uh, Vladimir wants to attack on the on the king side. We have knight to c6, knight to c6, uh, queen c6, and now g5, kicking the, the knight, knight to d7, and now continuing the attack with h4. Knight to c5, now uh, creating very nice spot for the, for the knight, and from there, uh, for example, the bishop, dangerous bishop, bishop uh, can be exchanged however black doesn't want to do that as this knight is also one of the best pieces um, on the board for black we have h5 vladimir continues the attack and now we have only one game in the database uh, where b4 was played uh, and white uh, quite easily won. So the continuation is knight to d5 um, and after bishop to d8, uh, white just takes the pawn, okay? Uh, knight to b4 and after queen to b7 and knight to d3. So simply, you know, winning the pawn and then continuing the game. Uh, and you would ask, why not take the, the knight? The point with taking the knight is the bishop goes to d5 and now now skewering the queen and winning the, the rook. So uh, white would not be only the, the pawn up, but a full exchange um, and the pawn up. So after queen to c7, the rook cannot be defended, just bishop to a8 and the game can continue. Of course, uh, white has completely winning position. So Magnus plays something um, against that. Very silent move, rook to b8, but now knight to d5 is actually not possible. 
Vladimir continues the attack. We have g6. So whenever you have, you know, um, the pawn structure uh, untouched and um, it's it's very solid, not weak, and the pawn structure in the front of the king, uh, g6 with the support of the of the pawn, um, h pawn on f pawn is the is the main idea. I, and usually, what black answers uh, is something you know, like like exchanging the pawns and pushing another. However, in this case, that would be quite suicidal because this bishop still watching on this diagonal so definitely uh, it would weaken this pawn structure so for now black has to do something else and magnus plays h6 and now believe me or not but magnus carlsen said about that position uh that it's it's so sharp that the draw is it's not even possible he said that in the interview after the game uh, and alexander grishuk said and actually there there is a you know possibility of of drawing that and he said okay after queen to d2 uh, and i would like to show you how to draw as white in this position uh because it's you know very unusual this this game should end with the you know win of the one of the sides this is how sharp the the position is but in this case of course uh taking them the bishop is is crucial a takes on b6 and after f takes on g6 uh white actually are able to to exchange to sacrifice the, the bishop on h6 so bishop to h6 g takes on h6 queen h6 and after g5 uh, white actually can um draw with the threefold repetition so so that would be the the one of the options um for white uh however vladimir kramnik definitely is not interested um in the draw uh and he plays knight to d5 uh interesting however keep in mind that the rook is not on a8 anymore so this is um you know sacrifice of the of the knight we have e takes on d5, bishop to d5, and now the queen can simply retreat to e8. This is what Magnus Carlsen played. Uh, and now instead of uh, immediately playing bishop to f7, um, black would be forced to, uh, to give the exchange here. Rook to f7, g takes on f7, queen f7, and queen to g2. Uh, the attack could continue. White could, for example, attack h6, and then try to uh, maybe castle, bring another the rook um, to the g file and maybe try to uh, continue the attack however it's not clear exactly how to do that and magnus probably would defend that with the pair of bishop uh, he shouldn't have the problem the knight is still pretty active over there so white would be very careful and uh, and it's still pretty risky i mean kramnik has nothing to lose so why not to attack you know very very fierce way However, he, uh, Kramnik thought, okay, this pawn is not going anywhere, so first I can sacrifice another piece, and he played bishop takes on h6. Uh, we have g takes on h6, and now rook to g1. So he attacks this way, and now the attack looks much more serious, because g takes on f7, that would be double check, um, the pawn on f7 would be, would be defended by the bishop, so... Uh, Black actually would lose the queen and the game, uh, but Vladimir Kramnik probably missed, uh, you know, counter attack. Bishop to h4 with check, so king has to be moved, king to d1, and now queen e5. So the queen is no longer uh, on e8, so this double attack is not so um, dangerous as before. Uh, and now the queen can go to d4, um, attack the king, forking the king and the rook, and also uh, attack b2. Uh, Vladimir tries c3, just countering uh, both of these threats, uh, but now bishop to e6, so look at all of these Magnus pieces, bishop h4, queen to uh, e5, with all with threats, so that was pretty impressive, and now bishop to e6, neutralize the bishop, and white attack actually collapses, so uh, Vladimir tries f4, this is the last trick, queen to f4, and now g takes on f7 with double check, this time of course, the pawn can be taken, but uh, white can go, you know, with the rook to f1, um, pinning the, the queen, winning the queen, and it's still winning for black. However, Magnus very calmly played the best move in the position, king to h7, and in this position, Vladimir Kramnik just resigned. He is down two pieces. He sacrificed um, two pieces for the attack, but uh, he has no resources just to continue the attack. The king didn't castle yet. If if try something like king to c2 to bring 
bring the, the rook actually uh, bishop to d5 just exchanging the pieces then queen f5 attacking the the king uh, these squares are controlled by the knight the bishop gonna come on the on the dark squares so for example king to d1 but now simply rook to f7 uh, queen is coming to f3 exchanging the queens and of course uh, two extra pieces are enough to win the game so white definitely doesn't have any chances this is why Vladimir Kramnik resigned so Magnus Carlsen won 3 to 1 uh, his match and I would like to show you the final standing so here we go as you see Magnus Carlsen 25 points uh, he could get the complete with 27 points however he won all the matches two of the matches were won in Armageddon this is why uh, he doesn't have 27 points uh, Jan Nepomniachi just lost uh, however he still um, has uh, second place Anish Giri 18 points third place and Peter Fiedler uh, fourth place that means um, these four players are gonna play in the semi-finals Vasilin Vanchuk, Vladimir Kramnik, Boris Gelfand, Ding Liren, Vichy Anand, uh, Peter Leko and the tournament uh, here as you see all of them get some prizes and I would like to also show you the semi-finals so Magnus Carlsen gonna play against Peter Svidler uh, and Jan Nepomniachi against Anish Giri so uh, write in the comment who you think gonna advance to the final it's, it's very interesting in the last tournament Magnus Carlsen played against Anish Giri is it possible again or not I'm interested you know in your comments uh, so feel free to, to draw drop the comment and uh, and yeah if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press and like and if you don't want to miss the games from the semi-finals press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one